welcome back, my friends. I was uh, enjoying my uh, day scrolling through some videos, and I saw that a friend posted a video of self-worth and value and identity. And if we don't see ourselves a certain way, then we'll live a certain way. And where we're at in life is because of how we see ourselves and how we choose to believe about ourselves. And uh, he asked, you know, like, well, how do you find worth? How do you find value? How do you see yourself? How do you, what are practical ways? And I'm sure that there are plenty of self-help books and secular books sharing their perspectives of what they think is valuable and how to you know look in the mirror and speak good words about yourself and put only good people in your life that only speak good words about yourself and i'm sure there's plenty of natural ways to go about doing this um, the only way i see in my life the way i went through it so the only way i see in my life how i've dealt with self-worth and value is to choose to believe what God says about me and my relationship is where I find my identity and my worth. So uh, one of the things in my life, I wasn't the best student. I didn't do the best in school. I mean, I passed the classes. I, I'm, I'm a brilliant person now. If I put myself to anything, I just master it. I like it. But whatever I like, I'll be good at things I don't like. I just don't care to invest time into. But before I just it was always hard and you know teachers would tell me I'm unacceptable and our school that we were in was unacceptable and everyone was failing and you know we, we constantly had problems and we constantly felt you know worthless and we didn't have any value and the school was not putting any value we had a new principal every other week or something every month or something new principals because no one could get the school turned around and everyone was stressing out and and no one could find any worth in, in each other. And everyone was like skipping school and doing bad. And I always thought like, well, you know, I guess we're not the best. We're not the smartest. We're not the brightest. And then pride and ego can kind of rise up. And, you know, well, I'm amazing and everyone's bad and everyone's stupid. And I'm the only smart one. And, I mean, you can try to build these false, you know, facades in your life of who you think you are. Because you're just trying to guard your heart from being hurt. But one thing I found out is... Just the other uh, month or so, I was walking around through the house and the Holy Spirit started speaking up real loud in my heart and he says, I think you're smart. I think you're brilliant. And I know it was him because I'm just talking to him in my heart all the time and just praying and 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 he's like saying all these sweet words to me and, and I want to start crying. And, and then I get mad and I try to like leave me alone <laughs> quit saying kind words quit trying to just jostle my emotions and and kind of just kind of work me up you know and get me crying why are you trying to get me crying you know what are you trying to do and and why are you just buttering me up what's your point well, I don't feel smart I feel like I make bad decisions according to the majority of creation I feel like I'm always doing things wrong and he's like you're so smart you're so brilliant. You're so wise. And I'm thinking, I don't feel that way. And he's like, yeah, but that's how I see you. And I'm like, well, why do you see me this way? What what makes me wise? And he says, because you seek first the kingdom. And you seek his righteousness. You seek me first. And when you put me first in this life, that's what makes you the most wisest the most valuable and the most important person on the earth because as you're seeking him first and you start seeing who he is you start seeing who you are the best way to change your mindset is to get the mind of Christ and receive his words and his belief system because this world's belief system they'll frame it for you and in the end let me tell you there's an end God has no end there's no ending in him. It, it's a continual seeing who you are more and more. The Bible talks about looking in a mirror and then you walk away and you forget what you look like. And it's like people looking into the Bible, reading it, looking into their... My friend mentioned that one time. He's like, so it's like the Bible, right? You know, you read the Bible and you see who you are. And I, and I was like, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. That makes sense. But 
you know what doesn't make sense is 99% of the population back in the day couldn't read. So they couldn't look into a Bible to see what they were. The only thing they had is a new nature, a born again spirit. And when they realized that's who I am and who I am is Christ in me. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. I started finding my self-worth and my identity, not in my job, not in my marriage, not in family or children or the things that I do, because all that can change and now your identity's gone. What happens to a mother when she loses her children or her children grow up or leave or something? She's like, I'm no longer a mother. It's like, what? I know some women, you know, the, they can't have kids or they're, they had their lady parts removed for some medical reason. And now they're like, I'm no longer a woman. And I'm like, bro, you're still a woman. You know, your, our, our identities aren't what we can do. It's who we are and who we've been born into. It's our, it's our, our right almost. It's our inheritance. It's what we received from God. So for me, the only way I can find my identity is spending time with my friend Jesus. And as I talk to him, as I read his words, as I let his words wash over me, it removes all the expectations that people put on me. It removes people's opinions. It removes my own opinions of myself. And when I start seeing Christ, it starts helping me see who I am. And that nature and that life of Christ becomes more and more real. So on a practical daily basis, it's literally waking up every day and living every day. And when emotions come and when thoughts come and tell you you're not good enough or you didn't do enough or you should have prayed harder or you should have done something more to be something, you know, a lot of people in this life, as I've realized, try to achieve things just by sheer like willpower. You know, they wake up in the morning, man, they hit the gym for two, three hours, and then they'll go to work and they'll work 10 hours and then they'll come home and then they'll just keep working and then they'll build this wealth and this, you know, society. And then they're like, Hey, look what I've done. And oh man, I found my worth until they lose their company and they commit suicide until they lose their health and now they can't do anything. And people start finding their identity and their value and, and what they do or what they can achieve with their two hands. Friend, please don't try to find your identity with what you can do with your two hands or what you can come up with in your mind. The only way I find my identity and who I truly am and what value I find in myself is I want to see the value that he sees in me. And if I see the value that he sees in me, then I will see the value in other people. And then I can call that out. So I can say, you're valuable. You're important. But how can I say that to someone when I feel like garbage? How can, if I don't believe I'm important and amazing and the apple of God's eye and special and wise and brilliant, and it's not pride and ego when you believe God's words. When you choose to resist God's word, that's pride and ego coming in. That's that flesh thing saying, you're not good enough. Yeah, that guy's a son of God because he really seeks God. You're not seeking God hard enough. That's a lie. Everybody has their own conscience, and that's what you listen to and follow. You're not supposed to follow other people's habits or patterns. You're supposed to walk with Christ yourself, and your conscience will tell you what you should or shouldn't be doing. That life of Christ in you will guide you. And the more you spend time with him, the more his word washes over you. It will sharpen that voice of God. It will sharpen that conscience to walk straighter and clearer and brighter. And it will expose any bad mindsets or dark things that you believed. I, I understand your parents and friends and you know loved ones and people who enemies might have said things and sowed some kind of words into your life and actions that created who you are. But everything that you are, you can't go back and change that now, can you? But what you do have is today. There is no such thing as past or future. There's only present. Every day we live in the present. Every day we choose how we want to think and how we want to live. I'm calling it like the hacking of the mind, where you can hack your mind and your belief system just by choosing to believe different words, just by filling yourself with different thoughts. If you listen and hang out with Tony Robbins 
And that guy's like, hey, that God's good, everybody, you know? And you're going to eventually believe him because you're hanging out with him every day. And he'll tell you, man, you're so smart. You're so brilliant. You're so, oh, man, everything about you is amazing. Yeah, but, uh, anyway, my wife's here with me, but I got to share this example. Uh, I had a girlfriend once uh, when I was young. I was in high school, and we were only friends for, like, a couple months, but she was like, you're funny. I'm like, why do you love me? You're funny, and you're cute, and, and I'm like, so if I'm no longer funny, if I'm no longer cute, if I'm no longer a good person or whatever things you like about me, you won't love me anymore? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's not love. We don't love somebody for what they can do for us. We love somebody for what he did for us. Because he so loved that he gave his son. He so loved that he laid down his life and served everybody on the planet. While we were yet sinners. While we yet hated him and destroyed him he kept loving us what if you find your identity in serving like christ but what happens is a lot of people go to church and they serve and they're like i'm in the ministry i served i've been in the choir i've been this i've been serving god all day and he hasn't blessed me and given me the nice stuff and i still feel worthless it's because again instead of finding our identity in christ and it producing good works the good works are trying to produce us and we're trying to find our identity and our fulfillment in our ministry, in our churches, in our pastoralship. You want to add something to this? So, one thing I found out that in this life, I have to keep my eyes on him. The only time I ever get sad, depressed, bored, angry, frustrated, is when I take my eyes off of Jesus and I keep them on myself. When I look at myself, I find out, man... I'm not as handsome as I once was. I'm not as strong as I once was. I'm not as smart as I once was. I'm not as talented as I once was. I don't have the same energy as I once did. And you start comparing yourself to your past or whatever. And I heard this one fella say something and I thought it was kind of interesting. He's like, if you're going to compete any against anyone, compete against your future self. You know, be better than that. And just keep every day getting better by every day choosing to say like, man, I don't want to be where I'm at today. I want to be better and I want to become better. But how do you do that? You see, too many times we get the short answers, but we don't get the how and the tangible things. For me, I realized it has to be a daily practice to where my daily practice lifestyle becomes a habit and it just becomes who I am. When I first started walking with God, it was hard to pray. I didn't like it. I used to read the Bible and fall asleep every five minutes. And I used to ask people, how do you read this thing? It's so boring. And I, I realized maybe if it's some weakness or something. But I found out like I enjoyed listening to it. So I would listen to it for hours and hours. And I would allow his words to wash over me. Now I get not everything that you read in the Bible might make sense to you. But sometimes just hearing those words that Jesus spoke in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John would do something to you. You would start seeing yourself valuable. You would start seeing what Jesus sees valuable. You would start seeing what he sees is disgusting, which most of the times it was those religious Pharisees who acted and smiled and were happy in front of everybody, but inside they were so rotten and so broken. So Jesus was trying to help everybody, but... They didn't want Christ, and they didn't want other people to have Christ either. I'm realizing, man, in my life, I want to be just like Jesus. And I'm believing that. And I'm not saying your personality will go away. I'm not saying your mindsets will become so robotic or something like that. I'm saying everything that you love, everything that you have in you, will become amplified and perfected and purified with His life and nature. There will be something so amazing that attracts other people to you. It's hard for me to walk around and encourage everybody if I'm depressed. It's hard for me to say you're valuable and you're amazing when I think I'm trash. I can't do that. And people will look at me and be like, you're lying to me. Because you think you're trash. But when you see yourself as Christ... When you see yourself that it is no longer I, I have a friend, I was hanging out with him yesterday, 
We bought a storage locker and man, it's like a treasure hunt. We went out there, <laughs> found all this pot, <laughs> all this stuff, all these funny, uh, random things. And anyway, uh, we don't do drugs. <laughs> I don't advocate. But uh, the funny part was I hang out with him and I always say, when you've seen him, you've seen the father. Because when he gets around you, when girls in the gym try to talk to him, all they see is Christ and they want what he has. And he can call value into them because he sees it in himself. And there's no more insecurity of, oh, I encourage everybody because I hate myself. What? That's just, we're always finding crutches. But you know, when you walk with Christ and you're so amazing, you know what happens? It overflows. It washes over and splashes over. The Bible's mentioned, my cup runs over. Hey, when your cup's running over, you're going to bless everybody around you. When people get around them, they're like, whoa, I've been with Christ. That's so beautiful. I want people to say that about me one day. You know, like, man, didn't my heart burn when I was with him? Didn't he speak the secrets of my heart? Didn't I get, like, encouraged and convicted and loved and sharpened? Man, I was with Jesus. That's what I would want people to say about me. But you know what I do? I spend time with him, and I become like my best friend. And I encourage you there's no magic formula in this. I hate bringing up formulas. We never tell you the way to do it. We just encourage you, spend time with Jesus. Wake up daily. Listen to his word. Talk to him throughout your day in your heart. Meditate on him. Think about him. Still your heart. Still your mind. And listen to what he says to you. And write those things down. And then you start believing and speaking only his words about yourself. Not what other people say. You know, one way to stop the flow of all that negativity is turning off media and sources and things that people are saying that's hurting you or turning off some of those sources that you can control, you know, that when people speak certain words into your life, you don't have to let everyone have a voice in your life. You don't have to receive when someone says, I think you're stupid. I think you're a failure. I think you're this. And you're like, yeah, my mom and dad said it. If my mom and dad aren't speaking words that are agreeing with the life of Christ, those words are from the, the enemy, period. That's how I heard it from the Lord, and that's how I treat it. I don't receive anything that anyone says that goes contrary to God's word. If it starts going contrary to everything that he's sharing and showing me, I do not receive it. And I only listen to his words. And I meditate his words, and everything that he says to me, I play it, and I wash it through my ears. I wash it through my mind, and I renew my heart and my mind to his reality. Because this reality, everything that you see, everything people say, is the 1%. The 99% is everything yet to be explored and to be received and everything that God has for you. So, man, friends, I love you guys. I appreciate you. And tomorrow, I hope to love you a little more than I do today. I'm praying for you guys. I'm encouraging you guys to continue to find everything in Him. That's where you find your identity. That's where you find your value. That's where you find your worth. And if you don't want to, my next thing is do everything the world tells you to do. Go for it. Get rich. Get happy. Gain a bunch of stuff and see if that stuff fulfills you and helps you find your worth. And if it doesn't, then you can check that box off and say, doesn't work. Give God a fighting chance. Most of the time when I hear him speak and he's trying to speak to people, it's like he's almost begging saying, give me another chance. Because I know religion and mindsets, they pervert how we see Christ. So I think it's really important that we go to him directly instead of trying to receive it from people, even such as myself. I don't have your answers. I always point you to the answer because he is everything that you need. And if you call him out on it and be genuine and say, dude, is this legit or is this real? Are you real? And I want to know you. Treat him like he's real and he'll treat you like you're real because he'll become such a reality to you. It won't be a weird religious thing. So I love you guys, and I'll see you guys on the next one.